Bloody hell. Wake me up. Wakey, wakey, Bernie, Bernie. Wakey, <laughs> wakey. Oh, Welcome oh, yeah. to episode 15, Bernie. Where, where does time go, eh? Where does time goes, fly when you're having fun? It goes quick, doesn't it? They, it they, does they always quick. say that. Like you, When you're younger, they go, oh, enjoy your life. It goes really quick. Like someone older than you says, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're actually yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, I know. They're it absolutely does. spot on. They're absolutely right. spot on. Do you know what? I, the one thing I do want to mention, though, is... Um, and obviously the podcast side of things, slightly different to the actual YouTubing channel side of it. Yeah. But we were right. We were absolutely spot on. That's if you put a thumbnail out with Tiger Woods on it, doesn't, yeah. it absolutely flops. Do you think because people thought, know it's clickbait? Well, what's click? I don't understand what's clickbait about well, it. Well, because people, Tiger's like, search, most searchable goal for all time, isn't he? But the facts are, we are never going to have a, a video made with you and I and Tiger Woods. You Let never, me, well, no, you no, no, know. I'm, I'm putting this out there right now, <laughs> all right? Everybody, if you ever see a clip, if you ever see a video, a thumbnail video with me and Lester and <laughs> Tiger Woods, that's never, never. going to happen. <laughs> never going to happen. No. Unless we bump into him in a, in a restaurant somewhere or whatever but that's never going to happen either because no. we don't eat in the same place he doesn't eat in mcdonald's does he let's be <laughs> honest <laughs> um but yeah it's it's such a shame because actually the conversation in that video i thought was quite good I, I thought it was good i thought it was, there was good there was good topics it flowed quite well it was a shame that people didn't want to listen to it or yeah, watch or it, watch but, it. No. but there we go not they're, they're lost not us exactly right that's exactly what <laughs> we, we plod say, on don't we? we move on <laughs> we carry on treading water <laughs> it's exactly what we do <laughs> <laughs> well, I have just got back from Turkey, which I do yeah. want to talk about in, uh, at some point during this podcast. But um, the there's, there's two things, there's two hot topics that I want to mention at the moment is Anthony Kim. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get on to Liv. I'm not talking about Liv as as the as what we're talking about here, but. It, it does seem that Liv is the only conversation at this moment in time in golf. Everything else around golf is just a little on the boring side, isn't it? It all centres around what's happening because that has been the news for the last 18 months, two years, and it just seems to be, it dominates golf, doesn't it? And it, it does. It's all, the, it's all the added extras that comes with that particular exhibition tour. That is... Not just golf wise, talk wise, but news. It makes news, doesn't it? Because it's it a, it's a headline, it's a headline story as such. But yeah, we need to we need to separate the live bit away from Anthony Kim and chat about him, don't yeah. we? What, what were you a fan of his when he was coming through? Because he didn't really his career didn't really develop to the levels that many had predicted when he burst onto the scene. And it was I, almost I looked at his. So I'm dropped in you again. I looked at his record um, individually and obviously in teams. He played Ryder Cup, but it's not that impressive. Three wins. Three wins on the tour, yeah. Um, no majors. A couple of decent finishes in majors, but he was. I guess he was on the verge of make of breaking through, but it wasn't. You know, I'd, I'd seen him coming back. The buzz that, about him playing golf and coming back from injury, and you know a 10-year or 11-year absence from, from competitive golf. And I thought, oh, let's just, how good was he? And I was slightly underwhelmed by his career statistics, I'd say. Well, I I was a, I wouldn't say I was a massive fan of his, but I was a bit of a fan of his because he brought something, He brought. He, you got to remember that he was in, I want to say the era, but he was certainly at the beginning of when uh, golf was starting to become a little bit cooler. Yeah. So um, you got to think like YouTube wasn't a thing. No. Then, so there wasn't all the cool kids in town doing YouTube videos. He was a bit hipster, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And it, but he was. You got to remember, Tiger Woods was dominating at that particular time. Yeah. Um, Tiger Woods was, you know, a young American, you yeah. know, dominating not just golf but but as a brand. Yeah. You know, so he was popping popping golf in a, in a way that had never been seen before. It, Anthony Kim turns up, you know, he's a young Asian, well, Asian American um, individual who, yeah. who was a young kid. He had the six pack, you know, he was, he was, he was flamboyant on the golf course. Yeah, it was around that time when we started to see a little bit more diversity in golf, didn't we? We, it wasn't, you know, stereotypically, it's a middle class, you know, wearing your, wearing your baggy chinos and your, 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 your traditional golf shoes with a, with an ill-fitting polo shirt and a baseball cap, wasn't yeah. it? That was what every single tour pro looked like with, you know, you had, you had the odd exception, a bit of personality coming through, but they were starting to change and it was starting to shift and he was part of that movement and maybe he was yeah. more famous for that 
movement rather than his golf, looking at his statistics. Yeah, well, I think he was, like I say, I think he was quite a flamboyant individual. If I, if I remember rightly, I think if I remember watching the Ryder Cup where he beat, in the singles, he beat uh, Sergio Garcia. Yeah. And it was uh, Paul Azinger was the captain of the, of the team and they were it was very much being dominated by the Europeans at the time. And I, I remember when they were celebrating when... Uh, Paul Azinger, who just like lifted up the lifted up the front of his shirt to show off his six pack, yeah. sort of thing. You know, a, a bit strange, but yeah. like, <laughs> you know, but it was just, it was you know, golfers weren't that style. They weren't no. that style of people. They were, you know, he was coming into that era of fitness and looking good and and a brand's dream. Really, he was almost he? too cool for golf, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He As was, was Tiger. Yeah. As was Tiger. You know, you had young kids going, I want to be, I'm Tiger Woods. I want to be Tiger Woods. You know, like, you never had, I mean, don't get me wrong, you had... Do you remember the advert? Yeah, I remember the advert. Yeah, I am you Tiger Woods. I, I am Tiger Woods. I, I so am got, Tiger Woods, yeah. yeah. Ti- Nike yeah. were amazing. They are the most amazing marketing company, yeah, in my it, opinion, because of what they've done with their athletes. Well, they've they've put, they pushed the needle and a lot of the top golf brands now and this is a completely separate story and yeah. maybe a little bit controversial are generally marketing brands yeah they're not they're not golf companies they're, still, they're golf companies but they they spend the amount of money they spend on marketing of their equipment huge and the Nike was the same when it with golf clubs they weren't I mean they were using old models of Titleist and buying previous you know they were they, were, they weren't developing much themselves they were basically copying and rebranding existing yeah. technology, but their marketing was so good, everyone was buying Nike equipment, weren't they? Because of the Tiger effect, because other golfers were using it yeah. on tour, and it was, it was, you know, it was so, it was seen everywhere. Yeah. But I want to go, I want to now move it to the fact that, like, you know, you've got to remember, Anthony Kim, he, he unfortunately developed um, an injury of some sort. I, I I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know what it was that he no. got, but he developed an, an injury and he disappeared pretty quickly off the scene. Yeah, and uh, he basically took an insurance payout. Yeah, which then, from what I could read at the time, was that he then basically agreed that he couldn't play because he'd taken this insurance payout. Yeah. He then couldn't play professional golf on the PGA Tour. His career had to basically end. Career-ending yeah. situation. Um, you know, so took so took the insurance payout on it. So this is this is someone that is you know you talk about people talk about live golf. They talk about the movement of these individuals that are at the top of their game who have who have decided to take a monetary payout to go and play on a different league that 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 sets them yeah. apart in the fact that they they lose out on that heritage that they they call the PGA Tour heritage. I mean it's. In 1968, when the PGA Tour started, let's let's yeah. get some, let's facts, get some out there. facts out there yeah. with that. Um, so heritage, I look at the majors more so than yeah. I do the PGA Tour. Even though there's some amazing events that have been going on for a long time on the PGA Tour, I'm not knocking it. But no, um, yeah, I, I know exactly. Where you're but heritage about. starts for me at, at like the Open Championship, the U.S. Open, you yeah. know, PGA Championship, all those sorts of things. That's heritage to me. But he gave up on that, as yeah. has a number of very elite players that could be could be dominating when it comes to tour um championships. Yeah. But they haven't. They've chosen to take a route that is monetary orientated. Um but Anthony Kim was the first one really to I believe to kind of really do that, wasn't he? Because he gave up on a career which was going to be a yeah. pretty impressive career, wasn't it? Potentially, but ultimately does injury does injury stop that? It's, it's, it, it's a tricky one because it, people you work through it? people play sports even at professional and high level for various reasons and each individual is different. There's the motivation for golf in particular. You know, Woods Woods is made. Don't get me wrong. Woods is, is a billionaire through golf and through the sponsorship and all the others. But I reckon rather than his bank balance, he's more proud of the fact he's got so many major championships and he he would probably give all that money to beat Nicholas's. Record. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you sat him down here now, which, like you said, we're never going to do, he would swap all that money for that. But there's other people that play sport as a job. They yeah. don't. There's footballers. 
famous footballers who don't watch any football, who don't like football, it's just a job. And if you ask them about anything other than their team or their games, they wouldn't have a clue. No. And it is literally a business. They turn up, play, fo- play football, and that's it. Yeah. And there's lots of golfers I can think of um, who see it as it's my job. I'm not bothered about winning stuff. It as long as I'm you know, providing and got a good income... Who was the the American golfer who used to turn up, play until he had his tour car for the year, and then disappear and go fishing? Was it Bo Weekly? Yeah, Bo Weekly. Yeah. And there's a couple of others. Rocky Media was another one. He never practiced, just rocked up and played. Yeah. Got enough money, and then he'd just disappear for a couple of months and go off and do stuff like right. not not in not in love with the game of golf. And maybe Anthony Kim was one of those characters who had a. It was a big payout. I don't want to. I mean, I don't know the exact figure, but I know it's it's in the. Millions. Of, yeah, it was, no, it's like it's like ten to twenty million of reports. Right. Um, maybe he saw that as I don't want to say an easy option, but maybe his injury was going to deteriorate. He thought, well, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to struggle. Someone's going to give you ten million straight away. You're made for life, aren't you? Yeah, I'm sure. Like, but I'm not, I don't. I mean, I don't. I, I don't. I'm sure it was a hard decision. Yeah. I'm sure it was a hard decision at that particular point because he was yeah. a young kid. He probably had ambitions of, of of winning major championships and all of those things. Yeah. However, yeah. moving on to the fact that he's uh, now competing a little bit on in in professional golf again. He's His got swing, a wild card, hasn't he? Swing swing looks tidy as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Still grips it a little bit down the grip, which is was his kind of like signature yeah. to a point. Um, got a ponytail. He's got a ponytail, which is a bit... look in the look in the business, isn't he? He does look so. This is a bit. He's just been a bit too critical. He does look old. He's not well, the. Well, he cool... has got old. Though, I know, he? but he's still in his thirties, isn't he? He's 30, I think he's thirty eight, thirty nine. Is he? He's younger yeah. than us. Yeah, he's younger than us. Is he really? Yeah, but he I just... definitely looks. He looks like I don't know what he's been up to, but he's obviously had a very tough paper. He's round, probably spent he... the money in the right um... in the right in the right way. Yeah, well, not necessarily in the right way, <laughs> but no. Um, I just, I just, he's not that cool kid anymore, though, is he? I mean, no, we no, all no, age. No. Yeah, and he's a, he's he's yeah, but I mean, we we've had a little conversation off camera about, and um, again, we don't want to go back to li- we're not we're, we're not talking about live, but. They're just throwing money at short-term solutions, aren't they? Or, or getting a, a bit hype. Yeah, but hype over him coming back. And, yeah. you know, fair, fair play to Anthony Kim to actually... He could have took the easy route and be like, no, I, I'm not I'm not going to play anymore, that's it. And he's, you know, he's putting himself in the limelight. Or yeah. That. And if he goes and shoots... I mean, he looks like he's swinging it decent. But that period of time away from competitive golf, I mean... <sighs> Like there was people a couple of weeks ago thinking Woods was going to rock up and win that event. Yeah. I mean, and there's the same people who are going, oh, he's going to he's going to turn up and you know golf is hard. And there's some even on that tour, you've got some of the best players in the world. Yeah. Um, and if he turns up and shoots 78, 79, then he's open. He's opened up a can of um. Up a, pass. Yeah, well, he's opening up a that's can of he, worms, isn't he? That's what he's going to do. He's yeah, going to open I mean, a can of wood pass on him. I would like to see him play well and. And compete and get back playing because it's been, he it's is a character, nice. isn't he? But yeah, I mean, character. I'm not. I'm not sure he's going to shoot anything decent. And I think he might be a bit of a flash in the pan. Have a play a few taunts, then decide he's he's too injured or it's not for him and disappear again. Yeah. But well, coming you, away what you, from what do you think though? Like, what we from were, Anthony Kim? Yeah. Uh, I just think he's a little bit like he's like probably right what you said. He he liver just throwing something at it, try and get some. You know, some 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 hot topic in the news at the moment, yeah. and then he doesn't. He just he he doesn't relate. He won't relate to the younger element of golf anymore. That no. that he's kind of been and gone. Really, they won't know him, will they? they won't, well, they won't know him. No. So he's then he only relates to people like us who are in our now forties. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe mm. maybe Bernie. Maybe he'll go out and win it. Well, I mean that that would be um, that'd be great. Good Actually, comeback, you know story, what? That'd it? be great, wouldn't it? I'd love to see. Well, that. Well, I mean, it it gives two different perspectives, doesn't it? If he goes and wins it, it gives those people that say that it's a non-competitive tour, yeah, more ammunition, doesn't it? Like, how can he turn up after ten years, eleven years, and not playing and win something? Yeah. Well, maybe he's been but playing a lot in the background. You don't know. It's different to playing in a tournament. Hundred percent. People around, courses are harder, more pressure. I've been to that. I've been to that course over in Saudi where they're playing, yeah. and um, it's it's pretty open. So yeah. I mean, he's um, it doesn't matter if he starts getting a bit anxious and start it's flicking it around over. the golf course, but he should be absolutely fine around yeah. there. But I would imagine the scoring would be low. Yeah, around there. I mean, 
then again, I didn't go off the back tee, so no. it might be slightly different back there, you know. I um, I want to move away from, from that, and I just want to get on to, um, we just had a, a, an interesting message that's come through from yeah. one of our, uh, we've got like a WhatsApp group, which is basically people that watch these videos and who have been on our bus tours. Yeah. So people that have been on bus tours or been on coaching trips or whatever, we add them into this um, this group messaging between Lester and I, and then we can chat with them and, and yeah. share content with them or share trips with them or whatever we do. So um, this individual's message in this morning woke up to a message to say that Teen Valley, which is a golf course not far away from us here in well, Devon. One that you worked at. I worked, Laura, yeah. both Laura and I worked there for a little while. Yeah. Um, is closing down for mm. a period of time until 2027 because they are revamping it into a leisure complex. However, oh, it's actually closing now. Closing, closing. Oh, I, I thought they were just doing it while it was still open. Yeah, yeah oh, no, okay. Closing down to yeah. then create a leisure it's... complex where it's going to have like paddle tennis and this and the other, all that yeah. on there. Um, but it is going from an 18 hole golf course to 12 holes. Right. Now, the only thing I would say about that is having worked there, it's I think. Nowhere. Well, it's kind of, yeah, it's. The problem, the thing is, Exeter's is moving closer to Tor Bay, so it's getting. Yeah, it's, I, it's I understand that, but it is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, at the it's moment, it's not easy so to get to. It's not a nice drive. No, but it is on the A30, the A30. So you go down the A38, A30, A38, A30, A38, and then you come off of it. And it's pretty straightforward on that road. But anyway, mm. anyway, yeah, that's not the, the 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 location of it is not the. And there's no phone here. signal. There's no you definitely. That no, out. It, well, that's a good thing. You can get out and get away from it all, Bernie. Get away no. from the world of social media and the world waits for no one just, that's true but anyway more importantly it's turning into a 12 hole golf, golf course. course we've talked yeah. about this in the past and i actually think to be fair you know i i actually think if you turn team valley into a 12 hole you could make some you could make 12 great holes out there it's got 18 yeah. great average holes at the moment i think turn it into 12 great holes could be a could be a there's good not thing. enough for the, the land that it's on my opinion, there's not enough space for an 18-hole, decent 18-hole no. golf course. It's too rammed in. Talkies the same. It's, I mean, I called the bottom bit Tin Can Alley because you're literally, there's balls going over your head from all different directions. And it, I mean, if you design that golf course now, I mean, it, they wouldn't, I don't think health and safety would allow it to open. No. It's just dangerous. So, I mean, doing that's probably for the best, but it's just so, it's so extreme to what people are used to, aren't they? But it comes down to this whole thing again where, you know, they are reading the market. They are reading the market. And to me, they're mm. reading it really well. Okay. Okay. This old method of, of golf, golf club membership, don't get me wrong, it still has a place. It still has a place here. It still yeah. has a place at Torquay. That whole traditional. Still has a place, traditional, traditional. Yeah. There, there will always be those golf courses out there. However, yeah. there is a handful of golf courses that popped up in the 1990s and 2000s that were yeah. farmland converting into golf courses. Yeah. that haven't really done anything because they're pretty average golf courses, to be fair. But there is a great opportunity to create family orientated golf clubs yeah. that have sporting complexes that, that are 12 holes, quick to play. You know, you've got other things that can keep the, keep the family happy and, and moving. Like, I take my hat off to any golf club that's going to do this. Read the market. Mm. It's gonna ch it is changing. It's going to change. And, um, so they're not going to open it at all for three years. It's just going to be there's better nothing to it. There's I don't know. Hotel there this or? is brand new, hot off the press. Yeah, this is purely probably gone out to the members at this moment in time at the golf club to tell. Must have a lot of money on. to better close a business completely down and and rebuild it and restart again. I mean, yeah, well, they may not. They may only nudge the golf course around a little bit. They probably won't rebuild the golf course. I wouldn't no, think they'll, I mean, they'll I mean, take if, twelve. If of the they're best saying holes. they're shutting it down. Yeah, they're closing the actual facility down yeah that's what I mean so they're going to be, have three years without any money coming in I assume so well that's a yeah be they must have a few to pounds to invest be, be interesting to see how they do it and what it becomes yeah I'm excited to see it's it in the, it's, in, it's on the edge of Dartmoor isn't it yeah it's right on the edge of Dartmoor yeah. in fact it's, is it in Dartmoor it might be in Dartmoor yeah in the Dartmoor National Park so Cause there's, not a lot of, there's not a lot of buildings around there and it's um it's a bit out in the open. No, but it might. What I'm saying is, it might turn into. I don't know this, but it might turn into a place where you go and stay and play. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking. So it is nice to get. There's a lot of that. land around there to walk yeah. around, and I suppose if they've got that much money, and it generally is farmland around there, and they decide that the model of twelve holes doesn't work, they could yeah. probably build another six holes. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's not like if you suddenly made Cherston, we're completely our boundaries 
the first like four or five holes are surrounded by houses. So there's always been talk over the years of selling off the 18th, the first, which is in a separate field, building houses on it. But there's also talk about selling other holes off and recreating holes further out where there's more land and and stuff. But if you had a, you know, if you did it at Torquay, for example, and you suddenly made it a 12-hole golf course and sold it off for building, you wouldn't better stick another six holes anywhere, would you? No, 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 no. That's what I'm trying to say. So, that, so it's probably not too much of a risk, the fact that they could actually probably purchase land at a cheap price and yeah. create an 18 hole golf course again if it doesn't work out yeah I think it will I think it will be a a model that is um, I think it's going to move forward I think two loops of sixes I think it kind of works yeah I, like I said before you know I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to 2027 to have the opportunity to play it well, we'll, we'll yeah. maybe we'll find a 12 hole golf course before that but I'd be interested to see what we feel like after we've just played 12 holes rather yeah. than go and play an 18 or you know, because I always walk off nine going, eh, kind of want a bit more. Yeah. I always walk off 18 going, I'm a bit battered and bruised now. Maybe because I mess mm. up the last six holes. I don't know. Maybe that's how it works. Yeah, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make your golf game a third less, isn't it? Yeah. In time-wise, generally. So, I mean, that's a, never a bad thing for people who have got limited time. But I've just come back from Turkey. Yeah. Had a week away in Turkey. Your coaching trip. Coaching trip. Myself weather looked good. James, weather was absolutely mm. delightful. It had been raining prior to us arriving, so they'd had some serious floods over there. You didn't yeah. sense that at all on the no. golf course other than sort of around the boundaries. Yeah. And then the day we left, it rained. <laughs> As I was getting on the flight, it was kind of raining. <laughs> so it was so did absolutely well, yeah. shorts and T-shirt. I had to pop my sweater on about 4.30 after golf Yeah. because it was a bit fresh. Yeah. But other than that, what a trip. Of course, looked good as well. Well... The Pines and the Dunes, we stayed at a place called the Sueno. Sueno, I think it's called the Sueno. Uh, you have two courses on site called the Pines and the Dunes. Yeah. And Bernie, they are probably in that Turkey, you know, in the Turkey area. There's 14 clubs, I think, at four course, 14 courses in the Belek area. Yeah. Not in Turkey. Oh, in Turkey. Belek, oh, in that Belek Turkey, area, yeah. which is just up the strip yeah. kind of thing. Um, it, they probably are... I wouldn't say that they're the best. No. Out of the 14 that are on there, they would be in the bottom half, I would think. However, you pick those up and bring them over here, yeah. and they'll be in the top, I think, in the top 10 of Parkland courses in the UK. Yeah. Because they were, well, they were fantastic. Fantastic condition, great practice facilities for coaching. Yeah. All inclusive. Yeah. That's at the golf course and at your hotel. The hotel wasn't connected to the golf, wasn't like on the golf course. Yeah, there was two, they got two yeah, hotels. They got the, the, the golf hotel, which is yeah. on the golf course. And then they've got a bigger one at the back, which we yeah. were in, um, which I think is a little bit more upmarket. Yeah. Um, that, that is like a short buggy, jump in a buggy and take yourself down there. Yeah. But 14 guys we had. Delightful. Absolutely yeah. delightful. Put on a few holiday pounds, but, you know, all <laughs> it's inclusive. It's all inclusive. You've got, you've got to get your money's worth, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. It's important too. Yeah, it is. But um, so yeah, fantastic trip. Same again next year. Same again next year. Not yeah. Turkey though. No. Okay. I think we're going to be looking at doing one over in M- M- Morocco. Okay. North African coast. A bit of sunshine as well. Yeah. Uh, I believe they do slightly cheaper inclusive. over there. Is that slightly amazing? cheaper. Yeah. Turkey slightly bumped up its prices yeah. a little bit. Still, you know, you can sure. still get trips out there. Really reasonable trips out there. Yeah. Um, but I'm. We, I, I just want to try something else. We've done two years in a row there. I just want to try. Morocco, see what yeah. that has to offer. I've never been. No. So it'd be a good opportunity to, again, do an all-inclusive. Because you do all-inclusive, you keep everybody together. And it's yeah. really quite nice. Whereas yeah, if you go off Yeah, people have got different budgets and they might not want to spend... No. 60, 70, 80 euros well, on a meal. Exactly. Or whatever. They are. Is it euros over there? Yeah. A bit of everything, really. They'll, yeah. take, they'll take whatever got, yeah. in Turkey, yeah. And Whereas probably the same in Morocco, I think. If you're all-inclusive, you're, all, you're going to eat in the same place. You're going to yeah. all be located in the same place. That's the best way to do it, I think. Yeah. If you go into somewhere like Villamora, you're, you're ducking and diving around these restaurants and bars, yeah. and it's trying to keep up with everybody. It's a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. So, yeah, very good trip. Fun yeah. and games. I don't have anything else to report on this particular show, Bernie. No, no. I just thought it was a good opportunity just to quickly get... A bit of info out there about, certainly about Anthony Kim, certainly about the 12-hole golf course again. Yeah. Golf is changing, Bernie. Golf is changing. Are, are you ready? I don't know. I'm sort of, yeah, I'm on the fence. You've just sat back, letting it all letting unfold. All, letting it all unfold just... and then make, a, make an opinion which no one cares about. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> well, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. Episode 15. We're looking forward to seeing you again, not only on Bernie's channel, but also on this channel. 
And uh, yeah, we'll see you for episode 16 very soon.